Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to God Conversations, Morning Inspirations, where we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are loving on you, God's people, and we are watching God change lives one conversation at a time. Listen, on this morning, I want to do something. A um, couple of months ago, I think it was a month ago, we were in Orlando, Florida for the Scent of the Servant Conference, and it was awesome. And I just want to share a couple of photos on this morning. We're almost at the hour at 730, and we're going to get started on time. But if you will, share and invite. Good morning. Let me see if some good mornings. Good morning, Sister Felicia Butch. You were first this morning. Good morning. Sister Don Thurling, good morning, daughter. Sister Janice Howard Edwards, good morning to you. Brother Reginald Darby, South Carolina. Sister Ashley King, she made it this morning. Wonderful. Tiffany Monique Bowles, Kima Hollywood from New Jersey. Sister Loretta Bell Parker, listen if you can, if you will, share and tag some people in the room this morning. I'm just excited about this right here. So listen, on this morning, let's get started. I just want to just share a couple of photos um, about what took place in, let me see. Um, let me see, in Orlando, Florida. Ebony Frazier, this is my little sister. I want you all to pray for her. She just lost her stepfather, which was like a father to her. Um, husband of evangelist Connie Hastings, Fellowship of Love, Church of God in Christ, pastors, doctors, Larry and Mary Murray. So please keep them in prayer as they prepare to lay to rest. Uh, also man of God, Deacon Hastings. All right, listen, on this morning, let's get started with our little slideshow here. Are y'all ready? Let's go. So here we have first, we have the brothers left to right. You all see my brother Rodney Johnson. You also see Brother Charlie. You see Dapper Deacon, Deacon Ali Wooden. Down at the bottom, my man, Minister Butts, Jimmy Butts. That's the husband of Sister Felicia Butts. Then here we have Brother, the couples from God Conversations. Look at these beautiful smiles, these beautiful smiles. These beautiful smiles, just wonderful, just wonderful. Elder died, there go you and your man. There go Brother Charlie, the, and Brother Charlie and Brother Sherry. Look at the Walker family down there. It's Sister Marilyn Walker and her husband, the Don, Brother Don Thurlin. Um, Juna and Sister Don Thurlin. All right, next slide. Y'all ready? Don't the couples look wonderful? Give the couples a hand. Come on, give the couples a hand. Ooh, I hear that in the background. And who could give their life so you and I could be? Y'all don't know that song, but I wrote that. It go like this. Nobody but you. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord. Yes, you, Lord. Nobody but you, nobody but you, nobody but you, Lord, yes, you, Lord, who can speak. Good morning, Jamie Bree. Jamie, you hear that in the background that nobody but you is coming. And to the left, Sister Tanya Renee Stevenson from Toronto, Canada with this handsome gent, Pastor Patrick Purcell, and to my non-negotiable to the right, Jamie Garfield, and to the bottom, the greatest administrator on this side of heaven, Pastor Tiffany Monique Bowles. Tiffany, we gotta do better in smiling. And to the bottom of the right, Cakes by Ashley, Ashley Sharita King. Yes, if you didn't know, now you know, baby, baby. Ashley Sharita King. All right, we're moving forward. Y'all ready? Y'all tagging and sharing this? And to the left, my girl from Snellville, L.A. Spears, 
the woman with the coolest name on God Conversations. And to the right, my friend, my ride or die, Wahiba Brown, my thug nurse. To the bottom of the left-hand corner, Sister Marilyn Walker should have told me to smile. This is Joy, Joy Cummings, and I love this picture of her. Down to the bottom of the right, faithful member of Gethsemane Worship Center, Elder Prince Purcell III, Janika Baldwin, Troy, North Carolina. She's also a part of God Conversations. She is one of our partners and have been consistent for years in more ways than one. Amen. Now, to the brothers, we finally got Minister Steve to smile. Good morning, Elder James Tilbert. To the left, my man, Blast Nonprofit Organization, my brother who is doing major things in Cleveland, Ohio, Minister Stephen Richardson. This is my brother, and I listen, this is my Mr. T of the Kingdom right here. Watch this. And to the right, there we go, Dapper Deke. Look at that. That's why I called him Dapper Deke. Deacon Ali Wooden. To the left, my new brother and friend, Prophet Jeremiah Daniel Davis of the All Nations Ministry, Bishop Matthew Stevenson. And to the right, our minstrel of music, Brother Ryan Pollard. All right, now in Atlanta, GA. Watch this. Here we go. Look at Sister Danielle and the girls. <laughs> It was two years, it took me two years to meet this awesome woman of God, but she finally made it to Florida and I was so happy to meet her. Jamie, I know you took these and Sister Marilyn Walker took so too. All right, so we're going. Y'all ready? Here we go. Prophetess Sherry Williams, now an Elder Lauren Simmons. I don't know why I'm smiling like this. I think it's because I just got my teeth fixed and I was just happy what the Lord had done in my life. Um, that's probably why I'm smiling because it was probably the first time in uh, years that I could like really smile like this and be confident. So Lauren got the smile pic. Pastor Ray Curry and his beautiful wife thank them for joining us in Orlando, Florida. This man of God preached. I know y'all enjoyed Pastor Ray. Pastor Ray is a preacher, preacher. And here we go. To the left, once again, the ladies in their individual pics on this morning. Here we go, Sister Janika Baldwin. That's a very pretty picture of Janika. Minister Evangelist Felicia Butts. I love this in Motion Ministries. I cannot remember the woman of God's name at the bottom. It escapes me. So Sister Spears, if you're on here, let me know her name. And to the bright, L.A. Spears again, the coolest name on GC. Y'all forgive me for this next picture. I was tired and Sister Marilyn Walker didn't tell me to smile. <laughs> oh, but everybody else made up for it. This is our group picture and I thought this was a wonderful picture. Look at um, Sister Tiffany with her centerfold face. Come on now. Look at Sister Dawn. All that pretty hair. Look at all this, all this pretty hair. Look at Brother Juno. Looking like we in Jamaica. Look at Steve. Look at Lauren, look like she in kindergarten. Sister Janika look like she mad. All right, um, who else? Ashley, good picture, Tanya, good picture. And my daughter to the right back there in the back, Jasmine Elder. I wish her mother could have gotten this picture. And to all of these wonderful people, listen, those are some of the photos that we had the opportunity to snap from God Conversations, Scent of the Servant, Kingdom Alliance presents Scent of the Servant Conference. And listen, I just think it was awesome. So once again, just I just thank God for all of you all. I love this picture right here. I love this picture. I wish I would have smiled, but I got on a good shoe in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Look at that. That's a good shoe. Y'all see that shoe? That's a good shoe in Jesus' name. Look at Joy smile back there in the back. Beautiful, beautiful. So once again, here's some of the pictures from Center of the Servant Conference. And just thank all of you all for joining us taken out of your time we couldn't we didn't get pictures of everyone but we know that you were there and we most definitely appreciate you all right i love this picture of the brothers on here i love it well listen good morning once again and welcome to god conversation where we are preaching the gospel of jesus christ we are loving on you god's people and we are watching god change lives one conversation at a time listen I'm going to give you all 60 seconds. I need you to share, tag, and invite. We're about 30 people on this morning. 
let's get this live up to at least 50 people on this morning. Y'all ready? Let's get started. That is my friend Michael J. Holloway, Jacksonville, Florida. When you get a chance to go and download that single, I Am a Champion, that is our theme song for God Conversations because we always win, even when it look like we're losing. Are y'all ready this morning? Let's get started on this morning. I'm excited. Y'all ready? So listen, on this morning, we thank the Lord for another day in the land of the living. And someone say good morning to everyone that's watching this morning. Truly today is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm excited. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. There we go. Listen, so listen, good morning to all of you. I'm asking you all to share on this morning, family and friends, and welcome to God Conversations. This is your host, Pastor Patrick Purcell. When we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are doing our best to love on you, God's people, and we are watching God change lives one conversation at a time. Listen, let's pray on this morning. Father, give us what we need for this assignment. Nothing more, nothing less. Release your predestined power that causes men and women, boys and girls, saints and sinners, to be transformed to the very image of your son, Jesus Christ. And when you do these things, we shall give your name all the glory and all the honor. And it is so in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Listen, if you have been blessed on this week, I see you, Sister Donna Allen. She said, I'm driving this morning. Please be safe. Listen, if you have been blessed on this week by this series, I'm damaged, but I am determined. If you have been blessed, I just want you to type on this morning, I have been blessed on this week. I have been blessed on this week because I believe the Lord has spoke to all of us individually and collectively. And I mean, he shared so much that I encourage you really to go back and listen to um, 
Go back and listen to some of the messages on this week. I believe it will be a blessing to you. Um, I believe the Lord has done some awesome things. And so listen, on this morning, we're going to get started with the Word of God because there is another level to this message on this morning. So on this morning, thank you all to say, I have been blessed, I have been blessed. Well, on this morning, the last subject for this Friday, I was trying to figure out, Sister Don, how to bring all this together. And the Lord gave me something that was so, it was so simple. You can share it, but it still belongs to me. I need someone to type this morning, you can share it, but it still belongs to me. Let's go into the Word of God this morning. I hope you are praying for me, my team on here, and I hope all of you all that are watching this morning, I hope you all are sharing. Thank you, Sister L.A. Spears and all of you all. I just want to thank all of you all for your partnership, those that have been sowing on this week. We're, this is our Fortified Friday where we release a special seed unto the Lord. And listen, we're going to preach and we're going to listen, hear what the Lord has to say. And I believe it is going to be awesome. But on this morning, I want some people who are really believing God for some great things to prepare yourself to say, listen, I am about to plant a new promise. Y'all ready on this morning? So on this week, we, we started with Brother Job. And we dealt with how the Bible called, the, how God called Satan's attention to Job, according to Job 1 and 6, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them, but Satan did not know where Job was located in the earth because he was not omniscient, neither was he omnipresent. But the Lord trusted Job to represent him in the earth, to be a representation to every believer. That like this is how you function, this is how you worship, this is how you pray when the Lord allows you to go through some things. And the Bible says that Job stayed the course even though his friends came to him 10 times. And when you have time, go back and look at the text. And the Bible says that Job called his friends, this was so interesting to me, he called them, and I thought it was funny, he said, you guys are the physicians of vain words. He said, you all have come to me over and over and over. He said, but if the tables were turned, I would have encouraged you in this season. But let me say this to you. I know that my Redeemer lives. And he said, he knows the way that I take. And regardless of what you are thinking about me, after he gets through trying me, I shall come forth as pure gold. The Bible says that Job's life continues and it progresses and he's lamenting and he's he's dreading the day that he was born and why his mother did not give him up from the womb and why did he ever suck from the breast and he's just bitter. And the Lord is not speaking. But the Bible says that Job said, but I'm going to maintain my ways. My feet are not going to slip. I am going to stay the course. And the Bible says at the end of Job's life that God told his friends, watch this, you better go make things right with Job. And the Bible says after Job prayed for his friends, his situation turned. Y'all better hear this on this morning. The Bible says that his situation turn. Now watch this. All this time Job is going through over and over. Could it be that sometimes your situation has not turned because you ain't prayed for the right person? Sometimes you got to pray. You got to forgive that person that broke your heart, that person that offended you the most, the person who criticized you the most, the person who did not have a revelation of what God was doing in your life and they were judging you wrongfully. But the Bible says, I didn't make it up. The Bible says when Job prayed for his friends that his situation turn. And I believe on this morning, somebody's situation is about to turn. And the Bible says that after Job's situation turned, that he had more in the end than he had in the beginning. And the Bible says, Sister Ivana, that Job lived to see his children's children. You, you better understand this. I got to show you something that the text Elder Tillman. People always say that Job lost everything he had, which is not contextually, neither exegetically accurate. When you look 
look at it, even though he lost his money, he, even though he lost his crop and he lost his stock and he lost his servants and all those things, God kept, watch this, a fertile womb in his life. Yo, Tiffany, y'all ain't ready. I know it's Friday, but y'all got to go with me. Come on, come on, watch this. You, you, you're looking at this and sometimes you have to have enough wisdom to understand even though my wife is talking foolish right now, if God going to give me another legacy, he's still going to bring it from this womb. So I just got to endure all this foolishness, all this fear, because when folks are operating in fear, watch this, they will begin to speak foolishly concerning God. Y'all ain't going to go with me this morning. I got to say it. I got to say it. I, I, I had to hold that thing right there. The, the womb was still fertile, even though the mouth was poisonous, even though the words were corrupted. Come on, Elder Doc, can we just preach it on this morning? Job said, you don't even sound like the woman that I married. You sound like a woman that is foolish, but I know who I married. Uh-huh. I know who I consummated with. Uh-huh. I know who the Lord used to give me children. And so even though everything around me is dying, I still got a fertile womb. That means I still got a place where promise and legacy can come forth. Y'all ain't gonna go with me on this morning. In Jamaica, they sing, I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am, watch this, I'm a promise with a capital P. You better hear this on this morning. You have to understand that every day that you wake up, you are a promise. Even if people can't discern your season, they may say, you, be t you may be talking foolish. You may be upset, but the truth of the matter, there's still something in my life that's fertile that God can get the glory and God can get promise out of. Who am I talking to on this morning? I dare somebody say, listen, I'm fertile on this morning and women ain't the only one that's fertile. It's me in this fertile. The Bible says in Jeremiah, he said, listen, ask me now, do a man yet travail like a woman with his hands on his loins? There's some men, you are pregnant this morning with promise and that's why you got so much pressure because the enemy is trying to make you abort. He's trying to make you carry so long that watch this, that watch this. I believe the terminology is that the pregnancy becomes breach. Y'all better hear me. But I believe what Isaiah said, the Lord is not going to bring you to the birth and you don't have enough strength to bring forth. Y'all ain't going to go with me this morning. I, I don't believe that God is going to bring you to the birth and you don't have strength to bring forth. Somebody need to holler. Somebody need to encourage their cell phone this morning. I know the season is frustrating, but I'm still fertile. My God, today. Ooh, I, listen, I need y'all to share this on this. I know the season is frustrating, but I'm still fertile. Y'all ain't going to go with me this morning. I know you feel like you're boxed in. Everything is dying, but guess what? Can I tell you? But you still got life on this morning. You woke up this morning with life. You gonna lay down to night with life. And every day that the Lord wake you up, there is something that remains fertile in your life that can bring forth prophetic promise. My God today, my God today. Listen, I'm, listen, every one of you all, listen, if 30 of you all share this right now, it'll go up to 60, come on. So share it with two people, let's double that number. On this morning, I was thinking about this subject. I was thinking about this. And when the Lord gave me this, Sister Tiffany, I kept hearing it. And I was up this morning, I was praying. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? He said, tell the people, uh-huh, that they can share it, but it still belongs to me. Y'all got to hear this. Can, can we go to the gospel on this morning? The Bible, the Bible says in Matthew's gospel, the 27th chapter commencing at the 28th verse at it, including number 33. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. Mm -hmm. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. Uh huh. And a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and they took the reed and they smote him on the head and after that they had mocked him they took the robe 
off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away, watch this, to crucify him. And as they came out, they found the man of Serene, Simeon, a uh -huh, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to a place called Gagatha, this is to say a place of skull, they crucified him. Listen, I, I need you to hear something on this morning. Are y'all here this morning? I want you to hear this on this morning. The Bible says that while Jesus, mm, while Jesus, after he's been beaten, after he's been sped upon, after all these things, the Bible says that here comes a man uh -huh, from Serene. And you, you got to understand that the word Serene is the modern day Libya uh -huh, that basically is set apart and that is set in northern Africa. So this man, his theologians believe that he was Jew. He was Jewish because there's a great population of Jews in the area and they believe that he was coming from a festival or the Passover. Watch this. But the Bible says that they commanded this man to bear Jesus cross. He did not know Jesus. He had no commitment to Jesus, but he was assigned to bear his cross. Y'all going to catch this on this morning. We, I just want to deal with somebody on this morning that feels like I feel and say, hey, neighbor, can you be my Simon just until I make it? to Calvary because if I get to Calvary I'm gonna be okay but I just need somebody to help me get there because at Calvary there's a death but at Calvary there's a healing at Calvary there's resurrection at Calvary there's Pentecost y'all ain't gonna go with me this morning if somebody just can help me make it to Calvary I will see the glory of God even in this at Calvary there's salvation at Calvary there's deliverance and even even though I'm damaged, the cross is still intact. Oh my God, you can help me share it, Elder Tillman, but it still belongs to me. Y'all ain't gonna go with me this morning. I'm damaged, I'm beaten, I've taken some hits, I've taken, been through some trials and some tribulations, and even though I'm damaged, even though I got a thorn, a crown on my head, the cross ain't damaged. Y'all ain't gonna go with me this morning. I'm damaged, but the cross ain't damaged. Y'all gonna catch it in a minute. There's some wounds, Jamie, I had to experience. There's some tears that I had to cry. And even though I may be damaged, the cross ain't damaged. Oh my God, can somebody holler this morning? Lord, I wish we was in a storefront right now. Can somebody holler this morning and say, but the cross is not damaged. All of us have done some things that we've been hurt. Uh-huh. We've been offended. But I saw something in this text that I ain't never seen before. Uh-huh. Jesus was damaged. Uh-huh. Because they had beat him all night long. I feel my Baptist coming up on me. They, they watched this. They marched him over here. And, and here it was, Herod and Pilate. Two men that were enemies became friends because of Jesus. And they said, who shall we let free? Shall we let this, this murderer over here Barabbas? Or should we let Jesus go? And they said, crucify him. Y'all better hit us on this morning. And they beat him and they stripped him. And Isaiah even wrote it and said, and when we shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire. He's a man acquainted with grief and sorrows. And we hid our faces from him. We esteemed him smitten and stricken of God, but surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Can I just preach the gospel on this morning? It's Good Friday today. Can somebody say, this is Good Friday? I can't hear nobody here. The Bible says, and surely he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, but with his stripes we are healed. I just need to encourage somebody on this morning. You can share it with me, but this cross still belongs to me. The Baptist deacon said, must Jesus bear the cross alone and the world go free? There's a cross for everyone and there is a cross for me. I can't hear nobody on this morning. I 
just want to encourage you on this morning when I looked at this text and they assigned this man by the name of Simon and they said you over there help bear this cross. Now this is the thing you got to see brother Reginald Darby. They had beat Jesus all night long. He was bleeding from his body. Uh huh. When you go study the autonomy uh -huh, and the crucifixion of Jesus from a forensic standpoint you will find out that they beat him till he was experienced. Uh, he was experiencing, um, he, he had become, um, his lungs were exposed. Uh -huh. They had beat him that he was suffering blood loss. Come on, help me now. He was sitting here and he was going through hypophalemic shock. Uh -huh. that he was sitting and he was going through almost congested heart failure. Uh -huh. He had become weak. Uh -huh. he, had, he was dehydrated. But this is the thing that we got to remember on this morning. Even though Jesus was damaged, his assignment wasn't damaged. Y'all ain't gonna go with me this morning. I need some apostolic folks on here that believe. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffin, I need some P-A-W, some apostolic folks on here that's going to quicken when I say in Jesus' name. You got to understand on this morning that even though Jesus was damaged, his assignment wasn't damaged. Even though he was bleeding, his assignment wasn't damaged. Y'all going to hear this this morning. Even though he had a crown of thorns upon his head. Jamie Ortiz, can I just teach it for a moment? I went and I studied and the doctor said that according to the makeup of man's anatomy, and how the brain is made up and how the skin and the layers and the muscles and the fibers and, the, and everything are meshed together. But by, watch this. It says that when they took one thorn uh -huh, and they pierced it in his head, it sent pain all around his body. Y'all better hear me. You ever got stuck with something in your head and because of how it's made up, you feel it from the crown of your head down to the sole of your feet. So when they put the crown of thorns on his head and they pierced him. He could have had an aneurysm, but guess what? But the Lord kept his mind. And some of you all on him this morning watching me, the enemy has pierced you in your mind. He's tried to pierce you in your face, but this is the thing that you got to celebrate on this morning. I'm still in perfect peace because my mind is stayed on him. Who am I talking to him this morning? You are in perfect peace because your mind mind is stayed on him. So here it is. They beat him. They whipped him. And now they take the flagrum and the pat of bullock and they lay it on his back. They beat him with a, with a metal of sheep rock with thrones on it. And we said 40 stripes. Uh-huh. But when I went and studied it, uh-huh. Watch this brother J.D. Thurlin. I found out that the apparatus that they used to beat, G beat Jesus was, it was a ball. It was was a ball uh -huh, of metal and then there was three throngs on it and every time they hit him it was one watch this it was three times one so they gave him 40 licks, but because of the three thongs in there, every time they hit him, y'all better hear it, it was three times one. Y'all do the math yourself. And they kept beating him and ripping him. And then they put the cross on him. And after all the bleeding, after all the agonizing, Jesus is carrying his cross. There's a man that's helping him. Did you see that, Ashley? You got to see. You got to see the picture here. There's, they beat him and he's bleeding and he hasn't made it. He ain't even made it to Calvary yet. Y'all better hear it. And they assign Simon this man. But this is the thing, Ashley. You orchestrate weddings. Uh -huh. You are a wedding planner. And you understand that when you plan a wedding, it's because the bride needs to make it to the altar because at the altar, there's a priest and a promise. Y'all ain't going to go with me this morning. See, see, you see, Ashley is a wedding planner. And this is what happens when the bride is about to come in the room. They say, everyone stand. Y'all ain't going to catch it. You're going to catch it in a minute. And as the bride comes down, whew, as the bride walks down the aisle, there's somebody assigned to make sure that the dress doesn't get tangled up. There's somebody to make sure the dress doesn't get caught up. 
up in the, in all the fixtures and the lightings and the pews and, and nobody step on it. And so this is what you got to see. Simon was making sure that Jesus didn't drop the cross and that he made it to Calvary because at Calvary, there's a priest and a promise. Y'all ain't going to go with me this morning. Y'all ain't going to go with me this morning. I'm a preacher myself. I'm a preacher myself. I'm a preacher. My, preach Patrick. I'm a preacher myself. At Calvary, there's a priest and a promise. Y'all not going to hear me. Y'all going to hear me. Y'all like, what are you saying? I'm going somewhere. See, see, Ashley, if you've ever did a wedding, you've done weddings, Tiffany, you've done weddings, you make sure that who's ever following the bride, they are stuck with the bride's dress until the ceremony is over. When they take pictures, you still a sign. When she walk down the aisle, you still a sign. When she go into the reception hall, you still a sign. Why? Because when you, listen, even though you sharing this moment with me, it still belongs to me. I need somebody to, Tasha, do you feel that on this morning? Even though you may be helping me share this burden, even though you may be helping me share this cross, even though you helping me carry this dress, it still belongs to me, my God, today. And the Bible says, let's flip it, Don, that here is Simon, uh-huh, and he's helping Jesus get to Calvary. And you said, well, Pastor, I thought Jesus went to Calvary, uh-huh, but you got to understand but the Bible says his name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And when Jesus got to Calvary, the priesthood showed up. What do you mean? Because without the priest, there could be no blood. There could be no remission of sin. I may help somebody for a moment. The Bible says Jesus arrives to Calvary. Let me preach like I'm in the missionary Baptist. Here it is. Jesus gets to Calvary. Oh my God. And here it is, Elder Matthew. Matthew Stanley McNeil, that Jesus is being crucified and he's damaged, but the priesthood is still intact. Uh-huh. What, what do you mean? See, Jesus, while he's hanging there, there's a male factor that says, hey, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And the priest says... Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. What, what do you mean? Because the priest couldn't separate the assignment from Jesus. Because Jesus was the assignment to shed the blood. And after the shedding of the blood, the priest was going to make an atonement. Y'all not going to hear me on the day. Y'all not going to hear me. You got to hear it. I know y'all question about theology, about, the, about my theology here, but go read it. The reason that the man began to talk to Jesus, not just for because he was Jesus, because the priesthood was in him. Uh-huh. The Godhead was in him. The redemptive plan was in him. And the Bible says, and whom is the arm of the Lord revealed to? Who was in a better place more than the thief on the cross to see the arms of Jesus being crucified? He said, there's no beauty that we should desire, but this man that's on this cross, he's wounded for my transgressions. He's bruised for my iniquities and even though he's damaged my promise is still intact. Y'all better holler on this morning and say we've experienced some damage. We've experienced some pitfalls. But Reginald Darby on this morning, my promise is still intact. I need somebody on this morning that understands that I'm in a season. Watch this. Where I got to share the burden, but it's the, the promise still belongs to you. I got to share the testimony, but the promise still belongs to you. I got to share the process but the promise still belong to you. You better hear it. You better hear it on this morning. Watch this. Here we go on this morning. I'm almost there. I was looking at this, Sister Tiffany. I was looking at this and sometimes you got to understand that your arms can become weak when you're trying to make it to prophetic promise. Uh-huh. You, you got to understand that the Bible and theologians say that Jesus was so weak that he could have never made it to Calvary. And so Simon was assigned to him to make sure that he made it there. Now, Ashley King, you're going to appreciate this. But the thing that we have to understand as Simon is helping him bear the cross, he has to move at the pace that Jesus is moving at. Mm. Oh my God, watch this. Good morning, Valerie Blue Smith from Germany. I need you to understand this. As Jesus is moving, uh-huh, watch this. As he's moving, 
Simon has to move at his pace. Y'all going to catch it in a minute. L listen, watch this. Watch this. You, you got to understand that there are people that are in your life that you are assigned to, that we are assigned to, but they're moving at a different pace. And what you cannot do, you better watch it, what you cannot do, you can't tell them you need to hurry up. You need to hurry up. No, you gotta let them move at the pace that is going to bring them into prophetic promise. You don't want them to rush and miss being processed. I just said something right there. Even though you've made it, you gotta let them move at their own prophetic process because you don't want them to get to Calvary and they ain't been processed and they say, I can't do this. Mm -mm. I can't handle this. I can't make it. I'm going to throw in the towel. You have to let people move at their own process. I know you want your sister to be saved. I know you want your children to be saved. I know you want your family to understand how you see, but you have to allow them to move at their own process so they don't compromise their promise. Oh my God, I'm almost there. Oh my God, I'm almost there. Watch this. Here it is. I, I, I got to show you something here. All right. iPad, don't fail me. Here we go. Thank you, sir. The Bible says in Exodus, watch this, the 17th chapter. The Bible says, commencing at this 12th verse, but Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and her stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Wait a minute, Valerie Blue. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sister Whitlock over there on YouTube, watch this. The Bible says, watch this. The Bible says that Moses' hands had become heavy because of the assignment. And Aaron and her took a stone and they sat it down and they said, Moses, sit down. Because believers, we can win and get the victory even in a seated posture. <laughs> I dare you to say, I'm gonna get the victory even in a seated posture. Why you riding in your car this morning, this word is giving you the victory. Why you sitting in your house right now watching with your spouse, there's a victory that's coming to your house. Listen, listen, I can, listen, I can have, I can obtain victory even when I'm in a seated posture. And the Bible says that they took Moses' hands and one was on this side and one was on that side. But listen to the text. The Bible said, but they held it up until, y'all got to see this, until the going down. Do you see it? Watch this. Until the going down of the sun. Do you see that? Actually, they held his hands up until the going down of the sun. See, many people, they will hold your hands up while it's comfortable, but you need somebody to hold your hands up until the sun starts to go down. Cause the sun is not going to go down until my victory has been secured. I need you to hear this on this morning. Every one of you all that are watching me this morning, it is Friday and we've labored out all week and you, you've heard this subject. I'm damaged, but I'm determined. But on this morning, I want you to understand this. Even though you've been damaged, even though there are people that can share with you, watch this, even though there's people who can share your cross, they can share the process with you, I want you to understand on this morning, but it still belongs to you. Watch this. I need you to tag somebody in the room and say, neighbor, it still belongs to me. Many people may not understand it, they may not understand where you are in your life. And they may say, Pastor, I, I, I just don't understand it. And I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I just don't, I just don't, I don't, I don't, I, I just don't get it. Well, I want you to understand that even though, watch this, there may be people in your life 
even though there may be people in your life that love you, people who say they are praying for you, I want you to understand that this promise still belongs to you. So on this morning, those that are watching, I want to encourage you because all of us are in a place where you, well, the Lord has assigned help to your life. Anybody got help on this morning? Say, I thank God for help on this morning. If you know you have help on this morning, say, Lord, I thank you for help. Sister Gigi, you have help on this morning. Every one of you all that you know, the Lord has sent you help. I want you to thank God for the help. Listen, be encouraged about that help because the Lord has placed people in your life that they're going to make sure that your hands do not drop until a victory has been secured. There's so much that the Lord has said on this week, so many different things he's shared with us. But on this Friday, I just want to take a moment and I'm not going to rush because I know when people start hearing the music, they start running because, oh my God, he's about to ask us for a seed. I'm about to ask those that believe in seed time and harvest for a seed. I want you to understand that. The Bible says as long as the earth remaineth, <clears throat> there shall be seed time and harvest. And many times the enemy will fight you, Don. He will fight you, Brother Judah. It's because he knows you have a great harvest. The Lord has promised you a great harvest. And so he will keep fighting you. But this is something that the Lord dropped in my spirit this morning. You have to see yourself greater than just being a servant. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this on this morning. There's nothing wrong with being a servant. But you have to see yourself doing exploits. Becoming greater in the kingdom. Becoming greater in your community. Because some of you all that are watching me this morning, when I was up this morning, I was praying. And some of you all, you think too small. You want big. But you think small. You want big. You, you will spin big to impress people. But sometimes you have to get to, you have to arrive to a place in your life where you stop doing things to impress people and you start doing what it takes to secure prophetic promise. The reason I'm saying that because no one on this live this morning that is a sore is struggling a consistent sower because God gives seed to the sower. There's no person on this live this morning that is a consistent sower that you're struggling. You may be waiting for some things, but you are not struggling. And I want to speak to those that say, you always find an excuse not to do the greater. You have to learn how to trust God, to believe that now unto him that is able, to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think through the power, the authority that worketh in you. You better hear it on this morning. There are people on here that I know that are, have started businesses and I watched them go from $5 to $10 to thousands of dollars because they always made sure that their consistency and their covenant match their confession. I don't teach on finance month, but I'm gonna take a little moment this morning to give you something. When you sow a seed, you always want to pray that the seed comes forth in the right season called harvest. You always wanna make sure that the seed comes forth in the right season call harvest because some people get a harvest and they blow it on the girl some people get a harvest and they blow it on a man some people get a harvest and they blow it on things that they don't even need so sometimes you have to pray and say lord don't allow this to take place until it is the right season called harvest i want you to hear this on this morning i haven't done this in a while and sometimes i do do it and on this morning i feel led to do it on this morning, I want to give you a goal and we're going to do this goal together and I want to raise $1,000 this morning. 
this fortified Friday. There's 30 people, over 30 people this morning. And on this morning, it's better when we do it together. And on this morning, I want to raise a thousand dollars. Haven't did a number in a while, but I wanted to do it this Friday because after all this teaching, after all the information we've received, I believe we can close out this week with a good seed on this morning. Elder Di, I believe we can close out this Friday with a good seed on this morning. Amen. Haven't asked for that in a while. And it's just one. Some of you all give it by yourself. Some of y'all do thousand dollar seeds, but no, I want us to do it together. Some of you all can do a thousand dollar seeds yourself. I don't want you to do it by yourself. Now, if you want to, you can, but I want us to do it together. So every person on this morning that will, I can't say you're sacrificing a hundred dollars or fifty dollars because how can it be a sacrifice when God is going to add substance to it? Sometimes we say things to play on the emotions of people and say, we want you to give a sacrifice. No, it's not a sacrifice to me. It's a seed to me because God only gives seed to the sower. Remember this. He only gives seed to the sower. And so if you have seed, the Lord trusts you to sow. Now, on this morning, on this morning, you're, you're always going to have substance. Those on this morning say, Pastor, I'm going to help you raise this thousand dollars. Those that will, I want you to put your amount on the screen. And y'all know we're going to do this in three minutes. I'm not going to sit here and prophesy cars and houses. Mm -mm. This ain't that type of lie. We preach the word of God and we believe that kingdom people respond to revelation. So those on this morning, thank you for those that are coming in the room. Every one of you all on this morning say, listen, pastor, I'm going to start this offering off. Who's going to start this offering off? Thank you, Sister Gigi, with a $100 seed. We only have 900 more to go. All right. Listen, and this is what I want. I only want numbers. I don't want, thank you, Elder Dye, that's 150. I only want numbers, okay? Thank you, Sister Tiffany, that's 250. Thank you. Who else on here? Sister Dalton, Sister Don Thurland. Now, y'all, 250, that's 300. All right, 700 more. I know I got some more $100 people in the room because if it wasn't, the Lord wanted to say it. Thank you, Sister Fears. Spears, that's 350. <clears throat> and there's some more. Thank you. Sister Ivana Williams, 35. Sister Ivana sold 100. I know she's like, oh my God. Sister Janika, 100. Sister Ivana sold 100. I don't know why, but sold 100. I don't know why. Because whatever position you're believing God for after you finish, I don't know if you're in a training or school or something, but I don't know why, but the Lord says, so that hundred, because he's going to open up that door and there's going to be a different tier in two months for your life. I don't know what you're doing, but I, it's almost like I feel like you're in a, a training or school or something, but there's going to be an opportunity that's going to open up for you that's going to put you in a different tier. All right. All right. So who else on this morning? Thank you, Sister Allegra, Sister Tiffany. You can do the count. Because when the numbers keep going, I'm looking at about two different screens. I lose count. <laughs> so on this morning, thank you, um, Brother Jonah Thurlin. Listen, I just thank the Lord for what he has done. Thank God that you are responding on this morning. And I believe now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. The thing that I love about God conversations, we have seen the Lord do some awesome things for people. We have, we've seen some awesome things the Lord has done for people and he's still doing it. Come on, there's some more of you all that's watching on here, that's been on here this morning, plant that seed. You may not have that $100 seed, do a $75 seed. My brothers that's on here, well, my brother, my, well, okay, I ain't calling names this morning because if you're here, you're here. Thank you, Sister Valerie Blue Smith, my friend. Valerie, are you still in Germany? Yeah, we have folks that watch us internationally. Thank you, Sister Felicia Butts, 130, thank you. Um, my friend is on here, Valerie Blue Smith. We're at 585. I think we're over 585 now, Tiffany. Um, Sister Valerie Blue. Um, good morning, Elder Sap. Elder Sap, we are sowing right now. You came in at a good time. Thank you for that $100 seed you're about to release in Jesus' name. Um, this is my friend, Valerie Blue, and we've been friends for years. And I think she's in Germany with her handsome husband. And she is a prayer warrior, so I pray that she keep this assignment on watch. All right. All right, so Tissi, Sister Tiffany, where, where are we this morning? We're almost there. You in South Carolina? Okay, well, when we host our event, you and your husband, you know I'm in Atlanta now. I'm in Atlanta now. Sister Felicia said, come on, brothers. Yeah, where are my brothers at? Oh, Lord, my brothers. Where are my brothers at this morning? All right, my brothers that went silent on me. 
know, the brothers, they skip out the room. <laughs> Sister Felicia said, where the brothers? The, the brothers over here, they just went quiet. They was texting while I was preaching. So we started giving, but they got quiet. Brother Jim, thank you, Brother Jimmy Buttons. Thank you for the hundred representing the brothers in Jesus' name. The brothers got quiet. They was typing while I was preaching. All right, it's, it's, it's okay. All right, all right. We almost there. Tip, what, what we at? What we at? We're going to close this out. We're going to close this out. Yeah, they, they got quiet. Elder Dye, I need, Elder Dye, you sow a seed for Brother Rodney and Brother and Deacon Ali, because you know if Ali was on here, he would be sowing. So y'all represent the brothers. <laughs> Sister Felicia then called him in. I told her, where the brothers? They here, they just quiet. Um, all right, all right, all right. 775. Okay, well, we're almost there. All right, 775. Brother Juna is here. Brother Thurlin is here. Brother Jimmy Butts did so. I need some more brothers to sew. Where's my brother? Um, let me mess with him. Um, Elder Sapp, go ahead and represent the brothers in Jesus' name. All right, we're at 775. All right. All right, so, okay. Look like the women gonna have to finish this off. My brothers done went to sleep. Where, where's my brother from South Carolina? He ain't done another comment since we started giving. All right, so, all right, let me stop. Let me stop. All right, so, I think Jamie done went to sleep on me. Jamie done went to sleep. Tiffany, text Tanya, and um, Jamie, where's Ashley? Let me, let me text my saints and say, where, where y'all see that this morning? All right, so that's, okay, so now we at, okay, we almost there, so 50 for Brother Rodney Johnson, 54, um, Deacon Ali, so 70, 75 plus another 100, we at 875, all right, we almost there, okay, so this, okay, we, we about to close this out, and this ain't no big number, so um, we at 125, so somebody close us out on that one, 125, I wish a brother would do it. It would feel so good if a man would do it. But you know, brothers tight. They, they only, you know, some brothers tight. When it come to Jordans and throwbacks, they, they'll pay $300 for a shoe that costs $5. Okay, but to me, all right. All right, so, all right, we almost there. Did y'all enjoy this this week? And I know some folks still watching like, are they gonna reach this goal? Yeah, we are gonna reach this goal. We about to reach this goal right now in Jesus' name. All right, so here we go. Um, all right, so this is what we're going to do. I didn't want to do it. Sister Gigi, I didn't want to do it. But I need all the women that can that's in the room. If you can, give another $20 seed since my brothers ran out on me today. My brothers ain't in the room now. Brother, if Brother Charlie and my other brothers, they was here. They got me. Um, Sister Ashley King said amazing word. Um, Ashley, I need you to put some amazing seeds on this word. I need you to amazing seed, amazing seed in Jesus' name. Okay. Thank you, Sister Gigi. And Jamie went to sleep on me. Um, text Tanya Renee, the um, the editor up there. Um, tell her send her um, send her seed. All right. Um, I know we'll make it to that goal. Listen, um, we will be back on next Monday. I want you all to keep us prayer as we prepare to launch KPC, Kingdom Purpose Church. I'm excited about that. You all keep us in prayer. The Lord is doing some awesome and marvelous things. Sister Natasha, um, $50. Jamie said, I'm not asleep yet. <laughs> um, but listen, um, thank you all. All right, Tiffany, what's the total now? We almost there, but I'm talking about next week. All right, so we just need $75. All right, so listen, next week we will be back on next Monday. Listen, I want to encourage you all to go back and listen. There's been a lot of information this week. Um, go back and listen to some of the recordings. We in good time. It's almost 8.30, 8.25. Um, go back and listen to some of the messages. Even when you just land in the bed, put your headphones. Sister Demita Knuckles closed us out. Thank God for the $1,000 on this morning. Thank you, Sister Demita. Um, for the Knuckles family. I'm going to say the Knuckles family because I love her husband. So the Knuckles family closed us out this morning. I got to put the husband in there. Oh, uh, yeah. My brother Rodney and sister Demita Knuckles in Jesus' name. <laughs> I got I to gotta put my brothers in there. Because um, sister Felicia told me yesterday that I'm a, she said I'm a male chauvinist. Um, she said I, I just always talk about men. Uh, 
God said the Holy Ghost didn't show you that. Yes, he did. You're a male chauvinist. All right. Thank you. So now, Sister Don, we are over. Okay, we had 1,020. All right. Watch this. So I want you, I want to encourage you, and I'm going to go in five minutes. Uh, I want you to go back, and I want you to listen to the messages that have been preached. I'm damaged, but I am determined. There was a lot of things that the Lord gave, um, and I can tell you, I don't have one single note in front of me, um, but the Lord has given us fresh revelation, and I thank him for it, and so I want you all to keep me in prayer, um, keep this assignment in prayer, and I live to love you, and I fight for you daily, and by this, we will know that you are his disciples, because you have love for one another. If I haven't told you this, I want you to know that I appreciate all of you all. I have no big eyes and I have no little U's. I just have people who function in different capacities, but I want you to know that I love all of you all. And if God give me the grace and the time, I'm going to show you how much I love you. This has been God Conversations, where we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are loving on you God's people, and we agree and decree that God is changing lives one conversation at a time. No one this year will beat me loving you. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing. He that have begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And it is so in Jesus' name. I will see you all Monday morning. Thank you for being the awesome person that you are. Be blessed.